this is Roger, thanks for dropping by. It's kitchen time. I had a go at this uh, brassavola. Um, it's been in soak literally since it came out of the box and I'm hoping that these lumps of coconut will disintegrate enough to at least leave some of the roots intact but I'm going to lose roots, that I do know. Also going to make a mess actually, since everything's soaking wet. Right, as I say, some of the roots are going to be lost, it's just how it's going to be. But I'm hoping that this is going to disintegrate and pull off and leave some of the roots behind. No way I'm going to keep all the roots, that's for sure, but uh, some is good. I don't know why I'm trying to save that, that's not even attached to the plant. <laughs> well it is down there, but not, not anywhere that's going to be of any use, I don't think. But we'll see what we can keep. It's got to be worth a try. The roots are detaching okay, they're not all breaking. I mean some of the roots have got into this, you know, they're actually growing through it. Um, highly unlikely I'm going to save any of those, but I'm just hoping that uh, at least some of this comes off and leaves a, a reasonable amount of roots behind. But using this stuff I'm sure has its benefits where it came from, but um, it's even got a sphagnum moss plug in the middle that wasn't even taken off. Uh, it's all geared up to profits and speed nowadays. It's, uh, it's almost as though the people don't even know anything about orchids. They just don't look after them, they just want to get them sold. Which is fair enough, I suppose they're running a business. Now, this is actually coming off in some cases reasonably well and not in others. But there are some new roots going down through the centre. Um, it would be good if I can save, this is the bit I'm after saving, is some of this round here, because a lot of these are actually quite good roots, it just depends how easily it breaks up. And the roots are uh, sort of loose, I mean, they're obviously attached, but um, they are coming off. I want to get as much of this off as possible. Um, and if there's an odd little bit left on there, it's not the end of the world. You can see the sphagnum plug in the middle here. Now all the roots in there are going to be dead. Dead as a door now. Just no point in even trying to save that bit. That's coming out. That moss is probably three or four years old. Possibly even more. So it's of no use whatsoever. <coughs> this is the bit I want to try and save because these roots are quite new in this area. sort of coming off, and it is leaving some roots still attached to the plant. <laughs> They're not all good roots, but a lot of them are. It's a mix here, um, there is an older dead part of the plant, but you can see here there's some lovely white new roots there. So there are some good ones in places. I need to get that uh, mess out of the middle, I don't want to mount it and leave that in place. That's not bad. The rest of that will probably wash off under the tap. Oh, hang on, we've still got a big lump over here. Even though it smells a bit as well. Well, that's come off better than I thought it would. I thought I was going to lose everything and just end up with stumps. Right, I think I clean up under the tap now around the base here, make sure all that moss is out and these last few little bits won't be too bad. Um, 
most of the long dangly roots will come off. Um, they're going to fail anyway. You can see like that one. It looks good until you look at the base of it and it isn't. There's no point in keeping it. So there is some root trimming to do. But that's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. But the, the tap will run the rest of this moss off, off the base and then we should be okay. There's a lot more roots left on here than I was expecting so it should should get us get a hold reasonably quick. It's the wrong time of year really. It'd be better to be doing this in when it's in active growth. Let me just rinse my hands and we'll have a, we'll have a look at this plant. <coughs> As far as the plant is concerned, this is new growth here. Yeah, there's a sign of another new growth there, so it looks like it's going to push that lead on, and that area there will grow some roots. Yeah, roots on brassavolas often come after the cane matures. Sometimes they come earlier. I've got a new growth here, which I would like to have to have mounted that that way round, but I can't because that will be pressed up against the back and may may well break as I tie it on. So it's going to have to go the other way round. Um, that's an old bulb that's just buried in the media. There's no point in keeping that. And um, that's a new growth that was damaged in transport, which is a shame. So it's actually broken, but it's nonetheless it's a new growth. And in theory, it will now shoot out from the base because of the loss of its tip. So we've got a growing tip here, definitely. And um, what I didn't realise when I was getting it out of the box, that's actually got a spike. Yeah, so we've actually got a spike. That may well fail, but there is a spike there. And now that I've found one, I'm going to have a good look around and see if there's any more. There could be. It's bloomed in several places. Um, you can see where bloom spikes have been taken off. So it's obviously bloomed before. But uh, you know, we've got a start of a spike there that may fail. That's bloomed, that's bloomed. Oh, looks like there might be another one here. Looks like that. That looks like a spike as well, so maybe two. That is quite a new growth there. So there's growing points in many places. I must remember to put some cinnamon on that broken pseudo bulb too. Dry that off. Right, so we've got several growing points. Now what is quite good, just, just coincidence, not planned, but this part of the plant is dead flat and there are some good roots in this area. So by mounting it there, those good roots are straight up against the mount and hopefully they'll attach and then grow on. And, and then what will be the front end of the plant has got a growing tip here. There is, that is just looks like it's starting to push out a new growth at the base there. So there's one there, new growth here, growing point here and growing point here. Now that one is round the back of the plant, but nonetheless, if that pushes out the growth, it will be against the mount and the roots will attach immediately. So, <coughs> not too bad. <coughs> not too bad at all. And get all these dead roots off the base and uh, get the last of that moss out. We'll have something to work with. So I'll have a tidy up and then I've got to go out and find a mount. Suitable size. Um, Given that this is growing in both directions, it also needs to be quite wide to accommodate the growths that are going to extend out sideways. Um, any growths that pull out forward, um, they may well have aerial roots, or at least some aerial roots. Do you know, this plant would easily split into at least three. But nonetheless, I'm going to try and mount it. Now, unfortunately, it's going to look a bit wrong because if I mount it, flat like that it's going to stick out like that from the mount and it'll look silly um, and it won't straighten up these are older bulbs so it's going to have to be mounted like that <coughs> which leaves a whole area here hanging but that's how it's going to have to go and then uh, as I said some of those good roots are at the back so they should attach and uh, 
We can give it a little bit of moss, but not too much. She likes a fast wet dry cycle, so it doesn't need to be absolutely covered in moss. Just enough to keep some of these roots hydrated till the new ones come. Right, clean up time, I'll be back. Okay, the uh, plant's cleaned up quite well. All the moss and other bits of uh, that uh, coconut stuff are out, leaving reasonably creamed roots and quite a few, more than I was expecting, and lots around the back which can go straight against the mount. Um, I'm actually going to wire this because it's quite a large plant, and um, the trouble is if you use um, fishing line, it can cut in. You know, if you if you need to hold a plant firmly, which I do with this, so I want those roots to attach, it's going to get wired. Um, first job, make a hole in here to get my hook through. And um, if ever you use something like, I mean, this is a sharpened screwdriver, basically. You could use a dowel, you can use anything that's uh, going to make a hole, basically. Preferably in a place that's not soft. <laughs> it's got to stay there. Um, it's got to stay there for quite some time as well. That should do. Now, I know some people actually make two holes and push the wire in through one and then out through the other so that they, you know, but I do it just with uh, a single loop. I always have. And some quite strong wire for the actual hook. Whereas I'll be using much thinner wire for the. Um, I don't need a long hook, but better to have too much than too little. Um, this is bonsai wire, so it's coated, so there's no bare metal anywhere near the plant. And of course, when you've got a hole in cork, trying to find it again can be difficult. <laughs> so basically, I want that up the back, nice and upright, and all I use this bit for is to just secure it in place. So all I do is go round like that and then back down the back and that will hold that loop nicely in place now. Okay. Worry about putting a hook on the end when I work out how I want to hang it. Not before because once you've done it it's too late. Certainly once you've cut it it's too late. Right, now this is quite a nice wide piece at the base, which is what I was after, but it's also a reasonably large piece, um, so it should give this plant plenty of room to move. Now I want the plant quite low on the mount, take advantage of the maximum width, but I'd also like it to tuck in that groove. Well, that sits on there quite nicely. And then, quite honestly, it doesn't really matter where the new growths come out, they'll be fine. Um, now, I used to put moss on the mount and then put the roots on top of the moss, but I don't do that anymore. And there is some logic there. At some point or another, the moss will break down. Now, on a plant like this that's probably going to stay on this mount a very long time, um, the chances are I'll have to take the moss off because it will start to go. And it's much easier to get the moss off the top of the roots than it is from underneath the roots. That way you can tease your moss out and if necessary replace it without actually unmounting the orchid, which will uh, obviously give it a far, far less disturbance. So I can wire this plant in place. This is gonna be good, I think this will work. If I get some wires around the back pseudo bulbs and hold that bit upright, I might be able to, because that pseudo bulb is broken anyway, I might be able to get a wire around there and tip that part of the plant forward so that any roots that come out are nearer the mount. But uh, let's get a piece over the uh, main plant first. I'm not going to cut this wire, I'm just going to uncoil it as I need it because I haven't got a clue how much I'm going to need. Not at this point. So I need to go in there. I'll go over that one and over that one, under that one, and over the top of those two old ones. And if it pinches on those, it doesn't matter. But I also want to get a grip on this bit here and pull that back tight. So 
need to go round about there so that it can actually grab hold of something. The beauty of using wire is I can just tuck that end round there and I've got the plant. The plant's now held. All I've got to do is get this other piece of wire in a suitable place. I'm trying to find a notch on the edge of the mount that will stop the wire lifting up, which I've now found. So that's the back of the plant held with a single wire. Yeah? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come round the front and try and get in there and pull that bit down. Uh, <coughs> I'm going to have to cut the wire. I've just got too much. I won't be able to thread it. Luckily with wire you can always join a bit. <laughs> right, I want to try and get that bit down. So I need to go in. I don't care about this bulb, it's already broken, so I can use that to pull against. So I think if we come round about there, over the top of that bit, and then I can probably hear it crack, I can pull against that, and that's going to hold that piece quite well, I think. That's Quite a firm grip with that wire, that's pulling quite tight. Right, that's the plant held. Now all I've got to do is get some moss on there, and I don't want much. I'm looking for longer pieces, not short pieces, so that they'll actually just wrap over the top. And hopefully stay on there with one turn of the wire. I don't want this plant wet. You know, I don't want loads of moss. This plant needs to dry out, needs a good wet-dry cycle. It's a cattleya type. It, it suits them, they like it. But I do need the plant to stay a little bit hydrated while these uh, roots get a hold. So I do want some moss, but I'm not going mad. In fact, that'll be enough. Yep, that's more than enough. So it's just something to keep the roots moist. Just for a while, won't need long. And then with any luck, one piece of wire is going to hold that all in place because I don't think that's going to go round another time. No, it won't. Any loose bits can fall off, don't care. Might be able to tuck a few more bits up under there somehow. But that'll do, as I said, I don't want a lot. And I can always put a couple of turns of fishing line around the moss if I choose to. In fact, I'm going to put that round there so that it just holds the moss in place and then just tie it off. I know it sounds odd, tying wire, but you know, it, it will bend round and hold. Just a quick pliers job. Just tuck that under there, pull it up through. It's like a knot except for it's in wire, so it won't come undone. And then that just holds the rest of that moss in place. Now what I've got is a loose end round here. Yeah, that was the end I just bent round at the beginning. Now that could stay exactly like that, it's not going to move. But to make sure it's not going to move, I'll just tuck it under there. Give it a yank with the pliers to pull it tight and pinch it. That's all I need to do. And that's done. That's it. And quite honestly, pulling this piece down here, there's far more chance of roots being produced now. I've got bare roots against the mount. I've got some pushing down through here. They haven't got active growing tips on, but they are white roots. They may branch. It does have a natural branching style. You can see little branches coming off here. So there are some roots to get going. Yeah. So that's it. That's that done. One brassavola mounted. It's got plenty of room to move. I know I've got at least two leads in this area. So I've got plenty of room to go over here. I've got a lead out the front here. Even though it's broken, it's still a lead. It's still liable to shoot out from the base. There is a nub in there already, looking like it's going to shoot. Yeah? And then there's a possibility of a new growth point here. And there's definitely one there. So uh, we'll see how we can go. Now, before I forget, we did actually have a broken pseudo bulb. I'll just 
just touch a bit of cinnamon on there to make sure that dries off. We don't get any black rot or anything setting in. Ugh, apple pie. <laughs> it's the smell of cinnamon. Always does that to me. So there we go, one brassavola. It needs a tag, but as it's the only brassavola in the grow room, I'm not liable to forget what it is. My other two brassavola, I had a hybrid, David Sanders, and I also had Nodosa, which once upon a time was a really good plant. And I dropped the Nodosa and broke the new growths off. And it set it back and then rot set in where those new growths died back and it just failed. And the David Sanders never grew properly and never flipping bloomed. So that just got dumped because I got fed up with looking at it. <laughs> So this is my now replacement only Brassavola and we do have a spike coming here and there was another one somewhere wasn't there yeah there's another one around the back here that that one looks like it might fail but that one could grow on it's a young spike so it hasn't had time to dry out or anything yet so there we go that's that one done wire this time not fishing line just need that to be firm. I don't want any wobbling when I pick that up to water it. I need those roots held firmly against that bark and then any branching that goes on in under that moss is against the bark. It'll attach immediately, which is what I want. And we'll go from there. Not a bad plant. I'm quite pleased with that. That didn't cost a lot. <laughs> and um, according to others that have left comments, it's quite a good bloomer. You know, it's not one of these that's troublesome. <laughs> um, so, well, we'll see how we go. I can see a few leaves have been trimmed in the, pra in the past, probably brown ends that made it look a bit unsightly. But um, nonetheless, it's not in bad condition. Not in bad condition. It's just, a, it's just a pity that growth broke in transport. Never mind, these things happen. And um, no bugs or anything nasty in that uh, stuff it was actually planted in. Especially if it's come from a foreign country. Bad enough with the English bugs. We certainly don't want foreign ones. There we go then. That's that one done. See you next time. Thanks for dropping by.